Okay, so welcome to episode eight of Warmaster Podcast uh, Adventures in 3D Printing. As as I talked about at the end of the last episode, I'm going to print a batch of um, six felbats. Um, so that's two uh, units of felbats because of the way that they are. We got six strips of ghouls, which will be a unit of ghouls and we have a vampire on a horse and a quite quite impressive looking scenic base for a necromancer what settings did i go for well somebody in the comments was using an elego mars 2 pro which is a similar machine to my machine and suggested uh, exposure time two and a half seconds and uh, some bottom layer exposure of 10 seconds and bottom layers of 4. He also talked about some lift distances and speeds that don't um, translate. The numbers he was using, like 80 and stuff, don't translate particularly well into this Photon Workshop because it uses different numbers. I don't know why. I don't know why that would be or is, but it is what it is. So I tried to change some of the settings. Now, a big problem occurred on the morning I was trying to do this print in that we had our first frost of the year and my garage couldn't get higher than about six or seven degrees centigrade all day so that is very cold and my heated enclosure as hard as it worked couldn't get the resin up to anything more than about 16 or 17 degrees there may have been other ways to deal with this but um, i thought i will risk risk it for a biscuit as they say so I, because um, you can change the exposure time to try and get the resin hotter, um, but I, I made the mistake of trying a small exposure time, because here 10, cent, 10 seconds is quite small, uh, and the resin was cold, and within about four or five layers I knew it was wrong, because I couldn't hear the ripping noise as the miniatures get torn off the FEP because the FEP, they don't stick to the FEP, they stick to the build plate, and then as your machine lifts up it rips, uh, the miniatures from the FEP and you hear a kind of snapping noise if you're not hearing the snapping noise it ain't working so after only about five or six layers I had to call a stop to it and you know what that means that means clean up time so empty the vat clean the vat it, as as Forest Dragon rightly said with a little bit of banging on the back of the vat and a little bit of picking gently with a gloved finger you can kind of knock all the the bits off the FEP so but it was another failed print so I'm getting uh, one that meant we're gonna to have to go indoors because uh, winter is not even started yet and I know how cold it is in my garage because I do some pewter casting out there and even with full thermal gears on and a pewter uh, casting setup which has got like a, a, a furnace of 300 degrees running <laughs> it's still bloody freezing so um yeah I, i've had to move indoors which is probably no bad thing because why should i be out there in the cold when i can bring it indoors uh, i found a, a place up in the attic so hopefully my wife doesn't smell the smell too much and then if i have to deal with venting then that's something i'll have to do because obviously one thing about the garage is i don't need to worry about venting because the bloody thing's freezing and uh, it's got holes everywhere so just open a window and Bob's your uncle. Anyway, so uh, unfortunately this was a failed print, so I'm going to run it back again uh, when I get a second. is the resin vat from the Mono. It's slightly different to the original Photon, and it has a scale on the side, which kind of gives you an idea of how much resin's in there. Although I'm pretty sure, I've been doing it for a week now, if you have to clean out your vat, you lose far more resin in the cleanup than you ever would in printed 10 mil miniatures. So although the cost of printed 10 mil miniatures aren't very high at all, I'm pretty sure I'm losing more resin in the cleanup than I ever am in from, um, from printing them. Uh, right, next up. I didn't know this when I bought this, but this comes with what is described by Anycubic as a fast change FEP sheet. Um, what is a FEP? Well, it's this piece of plastic at the bottom. And if you can hear it there, it's a bit like a drum skid. It needs to be tuned at about 30 hertz. 
which will be an interesting process. And I guess that's why they've come up with this idea of a fast change FEP sheet. Because what you do is you just take off this back bottom panel here with the screws and replace it as a sealed unit. So no, you don't have to tension it yourself. Um, but I can't find these buggers and I don't know how much they are. And I wasn't aware of this fact, so I panicked and I thought, well, I can't have it because I'm, 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 there's a knock there on the FEP. I, I, I know that I'm cleaning the FEP quite a lot at the moment because I'm making novice mistakes and scratching the FEP a little bit. And so if you can see a bit of a scratch there, maybe, or a little dent. And I'm sure the FEP will run until it gets a hole in it and uh, maybe it'll, the prints will degrade slightly. Uh, but that's no good to me. I can't have uh, a part go off that then I can't use the machine at all because I'm waiting for this fast change part. And some people are moaning quite a lot about the fast that they're offering a fast change. Um, that's slightly more expensive, but you don't have to tension. But at the end of the day, as long as it's not something I'm changing all the time, people don't complain about the fact you have to change screens and stuff. So as long as I don't have to change them too frequently, the fast change doesn't bother me apart from the fact I can't seem to bloody find them, so that bothers me a lot. Because if I put a rip in that, then how am I going to continue printing until I can get a new screen, a uh, new resin um, FEP thing? Right, so I ordered, uh, again from bloody Amazon, Jeff Bessels, oh my God. Uh, so uh, a Soval um, aluminium, it comes with a couple of like light-protecting caps, so that's cool, these, these rubber things to keep the light out. And it's... It's, it's metal rather than the plastic. It's cold, it's hard, and it comes with a regular FEP sheet, which is, again, supposed to be pre-tuned. Sounds like the same tune to me, to my untrained ear. Um, there's a little nook there in the corner. But, um, so that's what a FEP looks like when it comes. I mean, you can't really tell from the bottom that it, this is different, but it is, because this is a, a changeable unit, so you can buy FEP sheets from anywhere, fit the FEP sheet, which is about a 15, 20 minute job, trim off the excess, and as long as you can tune it, which I'm, we'll see how, that, how easy that bit is, then we're off. So um, I would recommend, if you've got a mono, just in the current situation, and maybe you weren't aware of how different it is to most normal machines, because it's the first machine I've come across where they have this fast change system which is a, both a plus and a minus. It's definitely a plus if you can't be asked having to tension your FEP and you just want a, a quick, simple, in the same way that, you know, when you buy an inkjet printer, you just buy a cartridge. You don't think of refilling the cartridge, even though it's incredibly wasteful to not refill printer cartridges. But that's what we do, isn't it? We just buy a cartridge, stick it in, unfortunately. Well, I'm sure there'll be third party versions of it at some point and hopefully the pricing isn't too crazy. You don't mind paying a couple of three, maybe four quid more, but I certainly don't want to be paying two or three times the price of a FEP just to have a fast fast change FEP system. Anyway, so um, we're going to change resin VAT, maybe, maybe not. But more importantly, uh, before I print any more, I'm changing resin because I'm sick to the bloody teeth. As good as this detail of this basic stuff is, I don't like the brittleness at all, at all. I'm not talking about snapping miniatures. I mean, that might happen. Obviously, resin's gonna snap easier than metal, especially metal with lead in it, because actually you can bend that and bend it back and it won't snap. But um, like 92 lead-free pewter, pewter 92 as it's called, that has a tolerance to bending, but if there's any kind of, uh, and there's like an imperfection in the cast, then it will snap relatively easily, especially if the miniature's badly designed and there's like a, a large piece protruding from like a hand. So like spears out of hands is a, or swords out of hands is obviously one. If you've got a big sword, a small joint into a hand, they can snap quite easily if you drop them anyway, but they can generally pin them, except a 10 mil. Uh, okay, so I'm probably not gonna do any more printing until I get my new ABS resin which is hopefully more plasticky. Hopefully it can live with a loss of detail. I'll tell you when we get there. Um, so this episode eight may be the, uh, it's on order from bloody Amazon, where else? Uh, I think it's about 36 pound a kilo. When it comes in, then we will start printing some more stuff. I might run some more chromity dwarfs while I'm waiting because they seem to print all right-ish, but I'm not gonna do the forest dragon stuff until I get my new resin.
As with everything in this game, there is a hell of a lot to learn and you can only learn it while you're doing it. Uh, because there is way, way, way too much information to take in and way much, way too many uh, different advice streams. So, yes, go and look on the internet. Yes, learn from your peers. But you also need to learn your own setup from doing it because no two setups are the same. No two uh, printing locations are going to have the same humidity and the same temperature and you, the, each machine's a little bit idiosyncratic each resin's idiosyncratic each de miniature design's idiosyncratic uh, there's a lot of variables it's 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 it's, it's not a hobby for the faint-hearted i will tell you that now sirs and madams okay so that, that was episode eight um and i'll see you it might be a day or two's time i'm going to try and record a regular podcast with paul at some point um but i'll get back on this as soon as i got my resin my new resin sorted so see you then.